Rob, over here. Obviously, uh, you, you were originally scheduled to fight Hamza back in the summer in Saudi. Before that, he, he had to pull also relatively close. So it's essentially two back-to-back -back camps for the same guy. Has this just kind of felt like just one long fight camp for the same person, or have you been kind of been able to separate it and you know take some downtime before you reset? Um, I guess like during my camps, I don't really focus too heavily on like my opponents specifically. So we cater the training to to counter and to to work niches that that'll work in the fight, but we don't. It's not like a, a foolproof game plan. That's why I was uh, able to adapt to the last-minute change last fight was because we're very flexible and, and open-ended with our, with our training and preparation. I, this whole year, like, I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to, to be able to be pretty active this year. This year's felt, felt like a, a whole camp. Like, <laughs> well, I was going to ask that, uh, but I'll, I'll ask it now. Like, in the past, you know, you've taken time off, you've had injuries and stuff, but like you said, you've been very active this year, so how has the last year treated you and just, you know, you've been able to stay healthy and just continue to go from these big fights to big fights again? Yeah, no, it's been great. It's been really great, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to uh, have been in a position to be able to do so. Uh, I, I like to be this active, if possible. Do, obviously, due to injury and other circumstances, I wasn't able to, to be as active as I would have liked. But I think the back-to-back -back camps, the things that have changed in the training, the things that have changed outside of the gym, they're just all kind of leading itself to, to where I'm at today. Was there any concern that he wouldn't make it this time? That he wouldn't make it? Yeah. I didn't worry about it. You know? yeah, sure. They're pretty quick with filling out the spots. He has said that you know he's reunited with some of his old coaches. He's moved his training camp around. He has this new scientific approach, uh, so he's not just training to exhaustion at all points. Um, are you expecting maybe a different Hamzat, or is it like you know the stuff that he does? He's very good at. He won't change. It's just the approach he's taking. Maybe not to be exhausted and get sick as much as he did in the past. Uh, I'm not. I guess I'm not really focusing too much on him. I don't think about him too much. I get asked a lot of questions about Jamai this, Jamai that. I don't think about it. Like, you know, he's, he's not on my mind very much. I am expecting him to come out hard and aggressive from the first second to the last, okay? And I have prepared accordingly for that. I've prepared for the hardest fight of my life to, to, to start extremely hard, like sprinting for the first five to ten minutes, but also drag it out to five minutes. I'm, I'm ready to sprint for 25 minutes if so. And, yeah, I, I, I come here for war. Your coach in the countdown said, I think his phrase was, uh, Hamza's looking for Rob's leg, Rob's looking for his chin. Has that been kind of, I know you don't think about him specifically, but has that been kind of the mindset as, as like a team? I look to, to, to go into this fight hunting him, much like I, I planned to last fight. I, I look to do again this fight. I'm, I'm the hunter in this fight. I'm the predator, and I look, I'm going to be looking for him. And after the Adrikas' win in Perth, you know, he was asked, you know, who do you think deserves the next shot? And he said, he interrupted the question, he said, Robert Whitaker probably deserves the next shot over Sean Strickland, but he's obviously probably fighting Sean and you're fighting Hamza. Was there any, you know, talks or hope that maybe you would just get the title shot instead of having to go through Hamza? It doesn't bother me. I've never really, I've never really let things that I can't control affect how I feel or, you know, what I'm doing. I mean, a fight. This is what I get paid to do. This is how I put bread on the table for my family. You know, this is my duty to my family. So, here I am. Last one for me. Can you just get your thoughts on the main event between Ilya and Max? Ah, mate, it's going to be a stellar fight. You know, I'm excited for it. I, I find it very hard to tip against Max at any time, just because it's Max, right? But Tepori would have to be his hardest challenge to date, I reckon. Tepori's skill set is probably the, I reckon, probably the, the highest caliber in the division at the moment. You know, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, hard tip against Max, but Taurus, no one thought he could do what he did last. Oh. Rob, um, it seems like every time you get a fight lined up, the UFC announces an Australia event, like a strangely weird timeline, like away. Um, when you look at that February show, do you want to be on it? Is there a chance maybe you can take Sean Strickland's title shot and fight Drickus there? What are your thoughts when you look at that February date? I don't know why it is, but everyone asks me the same question. If there is a card that is just after Christmas, it is a so-so. Like, it's 50-50, <laughs> you know, because, like, I've got Christmas. I, and, and, and to be honest, my family deserves a bit of time off, 
you know, whilst I'm the one going through the camps, they have to put up with me. And, you know, I haven't fought as much as I have um, this year in a while. So they've had to put up with me. Camp Rob for a, a fair bit. Camp Rob's no fun. <laughs> Um, I, know, I think you had said in another interview, like you feel this was one of the best camps of your life and you're just feeling like you're firing all, on all cylinders. Is that a product of kind of parlaying the work from the last time right into this? Uh, not just the last one, the, the entire year. You know, since the Drickers loss, and I kind of uh, had a bit of a wake-up call. I made some changes, you know, inside, outside the gym. We, we just sat down and we, we ripped in. We worked hard. We worked harder than ever. And you can see the results of that of that work show itself in every fight this year. Every fight I've gotten better, I've started to back myself more, the confidence I take in the victories that I've had. Mate, I'm coming into this fight, all cylinders firing. And with Hamzat's fights, it's kind of been a tale of two stories, either finishes the guy really quick or we've seen him go the distance those two times and he has looked fatigued. Uh, he said in here earlier that he thinks in this first five-rounder he could push that pace for all five. Um, are you curious to find out if that's possible? Because a lot of people look at those Usman and Burns fights and the idea of him going two more rounds uh, seems like it would be a lot. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to fire it off for 25 minutes. And, uh, yeah, if he wants to sprint with me, let's go. Hey Rob, how you doing? Where are you? Over here. Oh, there you are. Uh, Rob, there aren't many fighters in the UFC who are defined by being a family man, right? When we, if you ask me, I'd say it's you and Stipe. Uh, we just want to hear a little bit more about, you know, that, that is the defining feature of, of Robert Whittaker. How do you get to a point where you can disconnect that? Because that is really what you're all about and then do what it is that you do and then come back to it and turn us down to February when we're trying to get you for a, for a post-Christmas fight, mate. Yeah. Um, I, I guess... A big part of it was all about like redefining drives and goals, right? I've been in the UFC for a long time. You don't see a lot of fighters stay in the UFC for as long as I have at the calibre and the level that I've been at. And I think I owe a lot of that to just being able to now look, uh, what is it? Been able to redefine my goals, find my drives. When I started this, when I started my career, I didn't even have kids. So the introduction of kids during that period is just, it's mind blowing. Anyone that has kids will, will, will understand. It, it changes you. And I think a lot of fighters struggle with change, you know, because they've had whatever has given them success at the beginning, they don't want to change. Like, I'm like that. I don't, don't like changing anything fight week. But I, I've made those changes to, to my family, understanding what, what is important in life. I have my priorities straight. And I guess to sum it all up, like, I understand what I'm fighting for. You know, like, I, I fight for my family. It would make, wouldn't make sense not to spend time with them, you know, at the cost of fighting, you know. Well, just a little bit more on that, and, and, I'll, and I'll leave it with you at that one. Australia obviously claims you. Mm. New Zealand also claims you, right? So you've got the whole Southern Cross looking, mm -hmm. looking to this fight and looking for you. And how do you carry that into, into what you do, especially when you're fighting away from home in places like Saudi, now the UAE? How do you carry that with you? I'm very proud of where I live, the country I was raised in. I was very proud of the country that I was born in. I'm proud of the, 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 the mouldy blood that runs through my veins. I'm proud of being an Australian. And... You know, I feel like the spotlight that's on me, the attention that, I, that is given me, I owe it, you know, to, to be respectful, to, to set a good example, to be a good role model to, to my countries. There's a lot chat. Rob, Thanks, over the left. Hello. Uh, I want to ask you uh, about the, the you left a big, big marks through your career, faced many, many opponents and the big names and the historical fights. And what it means for you to be called a future Hall of Famer for you? I guess it's kind of like the, the cherry on top, right? It's like the, the icing on the cake. It's, I've always, a, a big driving point in my career has just been about trying to perfect my craft, become one of the best combat athletes who have ever lived, you know? And I feel like I've done that, but I'm still kind of chipping away at that. Um, I feel like my, the best years are still ahead of me. You know, I'm finally just falling into a bit of a groove. But 
yeah, I, I guess it's kind of just it's acknowledgement that what I've done was for something, that like, what I've done has been recognized, I guess, you know, like cherry on top. And uh, which of your fights would you like to see in the Hall of Fame from your previous fights? Oh, mate, that second Yoro Romero fight was... <laughs> my, it took the life out of me. That was a good one. And uh, hard to hard to think of any other fight by that. That one was hard. And one was for me. The many fighters find it fun to use the video games as a relaxation during, through the fight camps. How about you? How how good is it for you to play the video games through your fight camp? I oh, mean, it's not just fight camps. I play video games all the time, twenty four seven. It's uh, well as much as my kids and, and wife allow me, right? Um, it's more than just relaxation for me. It's kind of just like it's a big part of who I am, and uh, I, I, I like just like simply, simply, it's easier to not think about food if you're engaged in a game. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm pretty hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> and to follow up, you mentioned that Demetrius Johnson also plays the video games. Wh which video game you would like to play against him? Against him? Yeah. I don't really play online games. It's very hard to play online games with kids. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Robert, uh, you're left. <clears throat> Robert, uh, in your career, you were the only boy with a winning fighter until Hamza Tachimaev with Israel Madesani. Your first fight. Does it affect you in the graph of your opponent psychologically on you? Before Hamza, there was only one other undefeated fighter that you fought, Israel Adesanya. Yeah. Does it matter that there's a zero across their record when you fight them, your opponent? No. Like, it's, uh, like everybody was undefeated at some point. And, um, yeah, I don't really, I don't really look at records anyway. Нет, вообще никак не влияет. В какое-то время кто-то обязательно был непобежденный, поэтому я совсем не смотрю на их рекорд. Хамзат Чумаев антропометрически очень необычный боец, он высокий, плюс очень хорошо борется. Вот я смотрю сейчас на твоих спарринг партнеров, на твою команду, и не вижу там высокого такого сухого какого-то борца. By physicality, he's a very uncomfortable uh, opponent. He's tall. He's a really good wrestler. I'm looking right now at your team, and I don't see anybody who can replicate him. How do you feel about that? I train with tall guys at home. <laughs> I just didn't bring them with me. Я тренируюсь с высокими пацанами дома, но они просто не приехали сегодня. И последний от меня вопрос его передал Вадим Тихомиров с Матч ТВ. Если прямо сейчас Хамза Чимаев и Крам Алискеров проведут реванш, кто выиграет на взгляд Роберта? Last question from the Russian TV media channel Match TV. If right now Hamza Chimaev and Ikram Alaskarov will do a rematch, who will win? Mate, I don't know. Like, um, I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, fights, fights are funny, especially with the, the small gloves. You don't know what's going to happen. It's, um, that, that's what makes the sport so exciting to begin with. It's dynamic. It's very hard. It's very unpredictable, you know? Я не знаю, что сказать. Это очень смешной спорт, потому что каждый раз ничего, ничего одинакового не бывает. Каждый бой, каждый по-разному. Это маленькие перчатки, это очень динамичный спорт, поэтому я не могу сказать. Роберт, приветствую. Хамза Чимаев, чеченец из Чечни. Вот вопрос такой, с чем у тебя ассоциируется Чечня? Хамза Чимаев из Чечен, из Чечни. Вопрос, когда вы слышите слово Чечня, какая ассоциация вы имеете? I'm sorry, my geography is terrible. Like, terrible. Like, I'm not even going to sit here and pretend I know half of the places up here. Like, I live at the arse end of the world, you know, in Australia. And honestly, uh, I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a wombat. I don't really expand my horizons too much. Я очень извиняюсь, но у меня очень туго с географией, если по правде. Поэтому половину вообще мест в мире я совсем не знаю. Я живу в очень далеком месте, я живу в Австралии, поэтому я не особо расширяю свои диапазоны. Я как бы то, что я знаю, я знаю. То есть правильно понимаю, он не стал гуглить, там что-то изучать, просто оставил это дело. So am I correct to understand that you never googled it, you never learned about where he's from and all that stuff? Correct. Правильно понимаешь. Uh, and the last one, sir. Uh, 
Знаешь ли ты, кто такой Буайсар Сайтиев? Просто интересно. Кто такой? Буайсар Сайтиев. Do you know who Буайсар Сайтиев is? Sorry, no. Нет, простите. Роберт, ты вернулся. Очень приятно иметь тебя в Абу-Даби. Did you or Chimaev or even the UFC push to make this co-main event a five rounder? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mate. I I don't know. So you did not ask for it five be... rounds? Yeah. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> like <laughs> five rounds is so much harder than three rounds, right? Um, I know I've had a lot of them, but they're they're not fun. Um, Yeah, it kind of just worked out this way. But, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm in the fight then. If you want me to fight for three rounds, five rounds, ten rounds, I'm going to train for it, prepare for it, and I'll turn up. Because, uh, as you know, the past two fights for Chimaev, he looked very tired at the end of <coughs> every round against Usman and against Gilbert. And I think against you, this will not work, especially when it's a five round. Mm. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. It's like he's had such such success with his like really hard starting fighting approach. Okay, regardless of whether he gassed or not, he still won those fights pretty handily. And then it was due to the amount of dominance he had in those first few first first rounds. Now um, I'm expecting the best version of himself. I'm expecting a guy that comes out hard and a guy that will last. Okay, I've prepared for it. I've trained for it because I can't. I'm not going to train thinking that if I get out of the first round, it's game over. You know, it's... Yeah, I, I'm preparing for the best version he can offer me. A super soldier. And, yeah, I've done that. So, we'd love to watch you fight forever, Rob. Don't ever retire, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Uh, Yusuf here to your right. Yeah. Uh, Hamza, when he was here, he said that uh, you know how to lose. Uh, for him, he is undefeated. He doesn't uh, know how to lose. Uh, what do you think you bring differently to the table, especially that all the fighters uh, before you who fought Hamza, uh, they know that he's a wrestler. He will go uh, and shoot from the beginning and uh, uh, keep pressuring. Uh, what do you think you have differently to overcome that? My um, experience... I'm good at what I do. I'm a different fighter than he's fought before. And I guess maybe the fact that I know how to lose you know, gives me strength, gives me a reason why I don't like being there, why I don't want, to, why, why I don't want that to be my reality. You know, I, it sucks. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give him a taste of it. Last question. Uh, the fight between Hamzat and Komar Uthman, uh, if it was five rounds, who do you think uh, would have won that one? Mate, what is tricky, but Usman was catching up. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Uh, Rob, hi, over here. Um, so, uh, your career has been remarkable, uh, I'm pretty sure you all agree, in the way that you've been able to stay on top of the division in this case, middle weight division, uh, for almost 10 years, basically. And so it kind of looks like when, when you take a look at your record, you fought the previous generation, the generation, the, your generation, basically, and now Hamzat is kind of can be viewed as the representative of the, ne the next generation of mixed martial artists. So my question is, to what do you attribute such a remarkable longevity? I guess I mentioned it before. It was the... the Reevaluating goals and drives, you know, changing along with life. Because a lot of guys don't want to change what works for them. But like I mentioned earlier, 10 years ago, I'm a very different guy than, than what I was there. And, you know, I've changed accordingly for the better. I think I'm a much better fighter than I was 10 years ago. And, yeah, I'm only getting better. Uh, can you give an example of the changes that you've made, something specific? It's, a lot of it's mental, it's mentality, you know, it's changing goals and drives and really understanding what drives you. And, you know, you can say what drives you, but if you don't feel it here, if you don't understand it here, you know, you, you know. But um, there's a lot of things. There's like, uh, most of it's mental, but some of it's also just physical. Like, I don't drink soft drink anymore. <laughs> you know? How much of a difference that makes? 
I don't know. But I'm stronger for it, I reckon. Because I want soft drink. Really bad. But I don't let myself have it. Now I'm stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think some of, some of us can be jealous of such a resilience. <laughs> Iron fortitude. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, you said that you reevaluated what drives you, and what drives you now, like today? My family. You know, I, I, I'm going to use the word again, duty. And that's a strong word if you understand what it means. It's, it's my duty to be there on Saturday night, to turn up and to fight Shema with the best of my ability for 25 minutes. There is no, I am not leaving this country without doing that, no matter what. This is, this is my duty to my family, and I'm, I'm here to do that. Well, best of luck with that. Cool. Thank you. It's been a while since we've got to see you at one of these and indeed see you fight. How much, how painful has it been not being able to compete as much as you want to? It's hard. I mean, always, you know, when you want to do your job, uh, when you can't do it and you're not getting the money, it's hard. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, thanks, God, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm going to go in for uh, my victory and take my money, go home, be happy, so we're here. Obviously, you have had some health issues that have kept you out of the cage. I don't know if you want to go into detail as to what those were, but do you feel like they are all behind you now and you can move forward with your career without having to worry about that again? Of course, whatever happens in my life, so I've always been, come out with everything, always wins, you know, so whatever it is I fight with, always wins. Thanks, God. But right now, I'm here. Um, best guy who could be in the UFC, man. Does it annoy you now that fans, considering when you started in the UFC, it was a fight one week, a fight another week, that now fans almost talk about you like, oh, this guy never fights. Does that annoy you? No, why should me? Why should these this things uh, do something? You know, like, beginning in my career, I was like that. So why are these guys saying this, that, man? This, this is just the only fans, you know? So whatever they say is... Not, uh, not personal for me. Do you think Robert Whitaker could be one of the hardest fights in the middleweight division for you, based on his style? I don't know. So we'll see in the cage. So, but anyone on the top could be a hard fight, but somebody could be an easy fight. We'll see. Maybe it's easy fight. Maybe it's hard fight for me. So we don't know. They, uh, they say that it's going to be Drikus versus Sean Strickland for the title next. But if you go out there and you finish Robert Whittaker in one or two rounds, do you think that the UFC will have to say, OK, no, it's hands out next? I hope so. But they said that before as well. When I beat the Gilbert Burns, how long time was that? So two or three years ago, man. I didn't fought my chance. After that, Usman, if he beats Usman, I'm going to fight for the title. He didn't fought yet, so we'll see. But I'm happy with the money. I'm making more money and any champ as well, man. So, yeah. Life is good. Yeah. How do you think this fight with Rob will go? Do you believe he will be able to stop the onslaught that you bring in round one and round two and maybe take you to the championship rounds? Or do you think that he won't be able to handle your wrestling and aggressiveness? I don't know, we'll see, and uh, you know how to lose, we don't know, so I'm ready for victory. Comes out right here. Uh, on the countdown, it showed you with your new team and your new gym, so I'm curious how has camp been and any of the changes you made from your old one outside of no longer training to exhaustion every single time? What, what was it? It said, uh, it showed that um, an interview that in your old camp you would just train so much until you were exhausted and now you're taking a much more scientific approach and rest with your new team. So how has camp been with your new team? I have my old coaches still. They're my coaches and uh, always will be my coaches. But I just done the this training camp and we try the new things and uh, we train with the that guys who train the people 60 years, you know, so with professional wrestlers, with professional boxers, and uh, I had my doctor around me, I had my dietist around me, and uh, the guy who, who checking my supplements, everything, you know, I never had so much around me, you know, so it would be a different how that. 
Rob has faced high-level wrestlers in the past like Joel Romero, and he's faced high-level grapplers like Jacare. I'm curious, how, how do you think you are different from those two guys when you step in there with Rob? They are not MMA wrestlers. MMA is different, you know. So you can be an Olympic champion, but if you get an Olympic champion on me and MMA wrestling, I could be too easy. So this is different, you know. So I'm not uh, just wrestler. Uh, people are thinking about, like, I'm not just freestyle wrestler, you know. MMA wrestler is different. And say Rob does be able to stop the takedowns early. Do you think you would also hold the advantage if you if the fight stayed striking and you could knock him out on the feet? Who did stop my takedowns? No one. No one yet. So I don't think so. This guy will be different. So if Kamar Usman is a being a great champ and he took down everyone, but I took him down, I dominated him in the, in the rounds and easy. And what's gonna be different with Taekwondo or Karate guy and against like Usman guy, you know, being a wrestler. I mean, he was a professional wrestler before. And then, last one for me, um, unrelated to your fight, can I just get your thoughts on the main event between Ilya and Max? That's a hard fight for both. If he's gonna be on the stand up, it will be hard. But if Ilya uses his background and Jiu Jitsu and wrestling, I think. Yeah, can win the much easier. Hamza, right here. Uh, five round fight this time, and the past two times where you've gone the distance against uh, Camaro and Gilbert, people have criticized your cardio. Do you look forward if Robert can make it to those fourth and fifth rounds to showing how strong you can be later in a fight? Uh, everyone talk about my condition, but nobody see what I did with the guys, you know. So. I always fight, you know. I'm not the guy who is jumping around and trying to save my gas station, you know. So I go always all in, you know. So I like to go and finish somebody. I try to finish the guys. If it doesn't work, so I'm going to go all distance. Doesn't matter, man. So I'm here just win my fight. Do you have to change that pace a little bit, knowing it's five rounds, or do you feel you can go as hard as you want for 25 minutes if needed? I've been pushing from first second to last second on my sparring, but I don't think so. It would be different in the cage here as well. So, but I didn't say anything about my health before Usman fight. Oh, everyone thinks about how that went in the cage healthy, so uh, it wasn't that. I was sick on the morning before the fight, so. I don't find the excuse, like, don't cry, like, I had a short, short nose, like, with my dad, but I'm jumping in also in short nose in my fights, you know. Yeah, we're fighters. We do not, don't need to find some excuse. If I lose, lose, be a fighter, you know, just shut up and go home. How much better, given everything you've said about the training, the nutrition, do you feel right now than you have in past fights, you know, coming in a few day, like hours out from weigh-ins or, you know, a day and a half from weigh-ins? How much better do you feel right now? What? What? Compared to last fights, how much better do you feel right now, given all the changes that you've made in nutrition and training? It was amazing. It feels amazing. And uh, my camp was perfect. Never could be that good, man. So... Um, We've been in the mountains, been training, and never been in the. I've been always in the city and just a normal gym training, you know. So, like now, I was the Olympic Centrum, and they have everything there doctors, everything, they're checking around and checking your body, and all the things you need for the Olympic athletes, you know. So, they use it for me, and I'm in great shape. Did I hear you say in an interview this week that you still want to return to welterweight eventually? Who do you think would be an, an easier fight for you between Sean Strickland and Drickus Duplessis if you got that title shot? Don't know. Still don't know. When we go to the cage, we'll see. Thank you. Hamza up here. Left to you. Yeah. Hello. Um, you mentioned the, in, the, in the previous strong welterweight division right now, you competed at the welterweight division before and you moved up to middleweight. Now we see that there was many rumors about you were to shout out on the papers that would be a huge fight. And now shout out is fighting for the title against Belal, and you are in the middleweight one step away from the title. And at some point, you, would you like to go back to welterweight if you would be offered to fight? 
A four five for what? For the title. I didn't shout that. Of course. Um, I said I write to the hunter. So just give me a title anyway, class. So I'm ready. It doesn't matter if they give the money, if the title go for heavyweight. So. And uh, there's many new names in the middleweight division, close to the top five. For example, the Roma Dolize, I'm from Georgia, and interesting for me. Also, Caio Borali, your friend, and uh, Nasruddin Imao also. There's many, many names to mention. Uh, and the Roman was called you out before the fights and after the fights against fighting against you. And what do you think about him and the fighting against him? What should I think? We did train before, so... Um, that's it. Uh, I met him in Thailand, outside. I said, you want to fight? Let's fight right now. He said, no, I want to fight education. So, for me, this fight is everywhere, you know, outside, inside. Well, Roman is a great guy, you know, and... Uh, we had a friends between me and him, you know, Guram and Georgian guys. He's always been close to me. And I love that guy. And good character and same tradition, like I said before. If they give for him, you know, but he has to win his fight. He lost against many guys in the division. I never lost. That's the difference. All right, and the last one from me. You have a new nutritionist in this camp, Matteo, who is one of the best in the business, and you mentioned that you did not have the guys who helped you in the, before in the previous camps. How is it for you to, to cut weight for in this camp? How, how easy was it? It's much easier, but before... He would just eight kilos one day, you know. So, but here now we had a professional day and checking my weight and everything. My show, as like I said before, I've never been so good, good people around me, good team around me. I'm sorry. What would be the most satisfying way here? What would be the most satisfying way to win for you? To prove yourself that you can go five rounds with drop or? to submit him who has never been submitted in middleweight? Just win. That's it, man. So I don't think about five rounds. I don't think about submission. Just go to the cage, win the fight, smash up guy, and take my money. That's it, man. I never, never I, when I go to the cage, just thinking about how just to win the fight. How? Doesn't matter. Hi, Hamza. Yusuf here. Uh, a common opponent between you and uh, Whitaker is uh, Ikram al Askarov, who lost only from you and from uh, Whitaker, and Whitaker finished him faster. Uh, do you see any uh, sort of uh, threat different in uh, Whitaker compared to previous opponents? Like a threat from Whitaker to be more dangerous than all the opponents that you faced before? I don't know, maybe it will be dangerous, but I'm the most dangerous guy in the world. <laughs> so, I don't know, he, he finish him early, he, I finish him later, but I'm not that humble that I was before. He's not that rough he was before. So, we, the only answer is just a cage. He had a statement a few days back that he, uh, he wants to demolish you in front of uh, your audience here in Abu Dhabi. What is your response? Hello, Hansat. Uh, how are you? You know the Russian fi fighters. What's your opinion about a um, possible future fight between Ilya Topuria and Islam Makhachev? I don't know. So they have some Twitter war now. So uh, they both these both guys has to fight. The only answer for that is a well, cage. You know, like I said before. We never know. Everyone can say, I can say, I want, if you ask me, in my mind, in my head, I can beat anyone. So, but just, only answer is just the cage. Hamzat, приветствую. Здесь слева. Uh, у тебя был очень непростой последний год, был отмененный поединок, у тебя очень многое поменялось в тренировочном процессе, и для многих людей сейчас загадка, каким именно ты вернешься, вернешься ли ты тем хамзатом, которого все помнят, uh, загадка ли это для тебя, и можно ли сказать, ну, чу чувствуешь ли ты, что ты, допустим, находишься в лучшей форме за всю свою карьеру? Да, я чувствую себя отлично, но в таком, таких тренировочных лагерях я никогда не присутствовал. И такого круга тренировки, такого профессионализма вокруг меня не было. Я сам уличный парень, вот вырос на улице. Я, меня просто было все, все бои, это драка. 
Вот сейчас чуть по профессиональной подходим. И мне нравится это. Сейчас чувствую себя отлично. Думаю, должен быть лучший хамдат, который был в клетке. Роберт Уитакер последний раз проигрывал с Абмишином 13 лет назад. Это было еще за пределами UFC. Есть ли у тебя, знаешь, такая ну, цель, может быть, для себя стать первым человеком, которому получится удосрочить Роберта Уитакера на земле? Ну, цель победить, так, цель за Мишином или нокаутом, мне без разницы. Самое главное – зайти туда и давить этого парня. Пока что он не сломается. Там какая победа не была, мне без разницы. Салам алейкум, Хамзат. С 1 ноября вступят в силу обновленные правила, согласно которым можно бить вот, локтями 12-6 вот, по прямой линии. Так, например, можно бить локтем в область виска. А даст ли это какое-то преимущество, преимущество тебе в боях, потому что ты доминируешь как раз в партере? Конечно, для всех будет лучше. Борцов, для борцов будет лучший вариант, который добивать можно. И можно травмировать ребят. Но, к сожалению, спорт такой. Можно вот если висок, я не знаю, зачем ведут этот для виска опасное место, которое бить локтем еще. Ну, наверное, им виднее. Да. А Артур Бетерби поразил людей, как умеет одной рукой крутить 20 килограммовый гриф для штанги. Вы с Артуром примерно одного веса, а смог бы ты также прокрутить гриф? Гриф не знаю, но людей я крутить умею. Саламу алейкум, Хамзат. Алейкум, Как вы? Алейкум <laughs> Money is not changing the people to become the same you are now. So I'm the same harm that I've been before. So the people think like if you change the clothes, if you change get the money and you get the no, you stay the same man. So whatever is changing your life, I'm a Hamza. Best of luck to Hamza. Hamza to your left. We were, we are all used to you with your old haircut. Are you willing to cut your hair before the fight or this is a new version of Hamza? <laughs> I don't know, many people are asking about me, why you don't shave your hair, man. but if hair is health, man, should Artega will be the best fighter in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look good like this too. <laughs> a long hair, man. Good luck. Uh, thank you. Hamzat, how are you? On the left. Do you feel that you have a special responsibility, considering the fact that from August month, Czech sportsmen have achieved in the world, they have never been able to do it, Razambek Jamalov, Битербиев, соответственно, вот Бахрам недавно выиграл. Давит ли это дополнительно на тебя, потому что, ну, как бы, нужно не ударить грязь лицом, что называется, и вот Марку, соответственно, поддерживать? Нет, конечно, мне это радует и мотивирует эти ребята. Я видел все бои, Бахрам тоже нокаутом выиграл, и олимпийский чемпион у нас стал, и Артур Битербиев, такого в СНГ, такого боксера. Даже и в мире не было, они спили такого 7 поясов, 7 поясов. Для меня это мотивация, не давит никак. И победа и поражение от Всевышнего мы это понимаем, поэтому мы спокойны. Хамзат, мы Все. тебя впервые видим в очках на пресс-конференции. Расскажи, это новый образ или что-то со зрением случилось? Нет, никакой новый образ. Просто мне, когда читаю, и двоится в правом глазу, поэтому так... У меня это давно было, просто не хотел носить очки, ну, сейчас уже доктор сказал, надо носить. И еще по поводу Артура Бетербиева, разговаривал ли ты с ним после боя с Дмитрием Биволом и было ли какое-то наставление от него возможно? Ну, наставление, когда мы видели, что он мне давал, ну, такой чемпион, такой, э, с таким багажом, э, может научить тебя, научить тебя многому, я еще новый в этом спорте, ну, в сравнении с ним, можно сказать. Ну, я просто поздравил, он ответил на это и все. Hello, Hansa. 
Okay. What's your opinion uh, of Ilya Topuria, like a champion uh, as a fighter? A great champ. Thank you. <laughs>